What's up guys, Ray here. Welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much for clicking on this video. Today I'm gonna to be showing you a quick video of a work tool review and setup of what I have um, always on me, whether I'm going out to the job site um, or going to a different company. Uh, so y'all are gonna see all the tools that I carry and we're gonna kind of go over all of the tools as well. Um, and so I can explain what, if somebody is wanting to get into the industry that I am, um, just all the tools you might need and that you might want and all the different variations of those particular tools because some are better and some are not. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get into it. guys as you can see here I got two different style toolboxes that I can show you on my right I have a homemade box on my left I have a store-bought box I'm gonna get into both the details and what's inside of both how I have them set up but real quick I wanted to go ahead and break down uh, the benefits and the negatives of both toolboxes um, having a homemade box one depending on the prices and how big you want to go a lot of the times you might end up spending more money to make something yourself than you would just going ahead and buying something. Um, the beauty of having a homemade box though is that it's 100% customizable. You know, you can have it set up for anything that you may or may not need, uh, you know, and it can 100% be you. Where with something that you can store by, you know, it's quick and easy, comes with plenty, a good amount of storage, uh, but you know, sometimes you might be closed in with the room and also it might not fit the setup for exactly something that you're wanting. So starting out with the homemade box, I keep a lot of my large tools, levels, clamps, and different grinder discs in here. Also keep my crescent wrenches, hammers, and anything that's easy to hang up, that way I keep it organized. Um, the beauty of a homemade box really is the fact that you can just make it anything that you want, you know. Um, it can be any size, any shape, it doesn't really matter. I always suggest putting stuff on wheels, but at the end of the day, it can really just be whatever you want. Um, the problem with them is, depending on how big you want to make them, again, you might just end up spending more money. But for me, a lot of this was scrap material, so I just went ahead and put it all together, and it works out well. Um, starting with the clamps, we have our basic seat clamp over here. Um, I wouldn't really suggest getting it. Uh, you'll find them all over the place, and you know, you're really limited just to the size. Uh, they don't really come in too handy. I've had more instances where this was useful than actually using one that's still intact uh, so that kind of explains it right there uh, these are quick clamps um, i suggest getting any quick clamp that has pads on it i would definitely say that that definitely comes into use uh, being able to just squeeze onto something very easily and very quickly uh, over here we have our f clamps also called a bussy clamp to me, this is your best bang for buck. Uh, they are on the more expensive side, and I don't really find good deals for these, but they are definitely the best, in my opinion. I am always using these compared to, you know, your generalized C-clamp. Um, so, in my opinion, I would suggest getting, you know, some quick clamps and some F-clamps if you're wanting to get something. Over here, too, we also have a bar clamp. Now, this is a particularly very large bar clamp. Um, you know, you might want one of these depending on the size of stuff you're working on. Um, I use it to pull like walls together for machines and stuff, but um, all in all, again, these are your best bang for buck. And when it comes down to C clamps, just anything that maybe is sliding if you really want to have one. The next thing we have that I keep in my homemade toolbox is all of my hammers. Uh, I think it's always a good idea to keep multiple hammers. You never know what kind of situation you're running into or what kind of materials you might be working with. Um, and, you know, hammers aren't really expensive and they will always get the job done. Starting on the left, we have uh, just a classic beater. You know, it's just a hand sledge. Uh, I think it's like a four or five pound sledge. This has probably been my best friend. Uh, for a long time now when it comes down to work. The next thing we have are a couple of dead blows. Really, this is just used for soft surfaces that you're not wanting to dent. Um, I don't really use these a whole lot just because in my workplace, I do work a lot more with metal, but there's some things I don't really want to scratch up, so they do come in handy. 
The next thing we has, have is a ball peen. Um, this is really more used for kind of like machining work. Um, I would say you don't really see this as often uh, as much as you might just see a regular dead bow or a beater or even just your regular hammer. Um, so, but it is something that I, I use on a daily basis. Um, so I think it's something that is good to have. The next thing we have is a chipping hammer. Uh, for anyone who doesn't know what this is, this is really just used to remove slag uh, for stick welding, and you just need to clean up the weld. It's really good for getting underneath the slag between the weld and breaking all the slag off so you can clean them out. I also keep over here some very much larger sledges. You know, you never know what kind of situation you're running into. So sometimes you might just really have to whip out the big thing if the little brother isn't really doing its job. So I do have two of those. This one I don't use as much. Uh, as you can see, it's a wooden handle. And if you've ever swung a sledge before, uh, hitting a surface and then having it vibrate, sometimes I worry about this handle just snapping on me. But I do always keep it just in case somebody needs one. So when it comes down to hammers at the end though, I would say that just about everything here other than the the ball peen hammer and the chipping hammer i would suggest you having um if you need these you know if you're a welder and stuff chipping hammer might work a ball peen you usually can just use a regular beater to do the same thing as a ball peen it depends on the job you're trying to get done but these are the things i use and i would at least suggest having all of these on my on the top not really these two if you don't really need them Usually the third thing I have for you are all of my levels. Um, no, I am not in any way sponsoring Empire, but I will say I personally think that any Empire level is definitely the best way to go. I know Milwaukee makes very similar levels to these. Uh, they come in red, so you know if you just like red more than blue, maybe you want a Milwaukee. But in my opinion, I do think Empire makes the best levels. I'm pretty sure that's the only business Empire is even in is leveling equipment and I've never had any problem with them. Uh, so to start off, you know, a bigger level is always going to be more expensive. The bigger you go, it's just going to cost more money and the smaller it's going to be a little less. So if you need a bigger level, you know, I would just go ahead and get a bigger one. Between a two foot and a four foot, as you can see, you know, it's half the size. And when it comes down to the price range and what you could possibly run into, sometimes, you know, just bigger is better. And I would say to get a bigger level, you can always buy smaller levels that do basically the same job um, as a two foot level. So now speaking about the torpedoes, I will say, if you want a decent torpedo, this is the best torpedo for your money, okay? This it's Empire EM71.8 billet. Um, it has all different angles to find. Uh, it's made out of metal, really strong magnets, probably the best magnets uh, in the industry, in my opinion. Um, this is definitely the best level to have, and I suggest, if anything, at bare minimum, have this level. This level will you know lasts you forever and is definitely the best built level on the market um but again empire in my opinion builds the best levels but it all comes down to personal preference the last stuff that i keep in my homemade toolbox or the rest of these tools that i have here um to the right i have different size pry bars i would suggest everybody at least having one of these um they're relative relatively inexpensive I think this biggest one here probably runs 20 to 30 dollars. Um, it's not a lot of money, but at the end of the day, having a pry bar definitely comes in handy. I also keep my crescent wrenches in there. Uh, one of the beauties of the homemade toolbox is really I just open the door and grab what I need. Uh, having these crescent wrenches is definitely always convenient, just in case I need to get to different size bolts working all in the same thing and I don't want to bring out all of my sockets or all of my wrenches. A, cre a crescent wrench will always do the job, so I'll definitely say you should have one or two of these in your toolbox. The other things that I have are just a few grinding discs and some wire wheels and cutting wheels, all for the grinder that I keep conveniently hanged up. I also keep bolt cutters and some scissors. That way I can cut into anything that might be in my way. I also keep my shackles in there. Uh, with, with my job, I do rig up a lot of bigger pieces to move around, um, building machines and stuff. You run into having 
Um, you know, there's big parts that I have to move around with a crane, so having shackles is always good. I also keep all of my thread seal in and my pipe seal in and stuff like that in there just for convenience. Um, so again, when it comes down to the homemade toolbox, uh, I would definitely say the beauty is just being able to have all of this in there, you know, however you want to have it, fine. Getting into the standard toolbox, I want to start off with the pros. Overall, they're the best bang for buck when it comes to instant organization, all different kinds of sizes, colors, brands. Uh, the biggest con really when it comes down to it is you're going to get exactly what you pay for. There's not a whole lot that you can do to change the size or anything. So if you're somebody who's going to be buying a lot of tools, I would definitely recommend buying a bigger box than what you have the tools for to allow yourself some room to grow. Because I know even for me with my setup, I have this thing almost completely maxed out. So, so which is why I actually have multiple toolboxes. Um, and the biggest thing is the other problem when it comes down to having a regular standard toolbox is just the size factor. When you have a lot of bigger tools, you're not going to be able to fit them. So they're just going to be laying around where with something that you build, you can really just change to fit anything that you might really need um, at whatever job or location you're going towards. So I'll go ahead and break down some of the things that I have in here and show you what it is. My top drawer is where I keep a lot of my sockets and my wrenches. I also keep my torque wrenches in here. Um, it's just easy to be able to just quickly slide out this large drawer. A lot of these tools are large and they come in bigger sets. So being able to have one top drawer to quickly hold all of these very much comes in handy. My, my next drawer is under that or where I keep all of my bits, my chisels, you know, just miscellaneous things. I also keep all of my screwdrivers, tape measures, metric and sander, Allen keys and Allen heads, different markers and stuff. You know, and all in all, I would say getting just a little bit of all of this stuff is definitely where you could start. You know, you can buy little sets of screwdrivers, getting a tape measure is pretty cheap. These little sets that come with all different kinds of Allens always work. You can always buy yourself a drill bit set. You know, when it comes to drill bits, you can't, in my opinion, you can't really always find the best drill bit. At the end of the day, just, I would learn how to sharpen them very well. That way you can get a good life out of all of your bits instead of keep buying them over and over again. In the next drawers, I keep all my pipe wrenches and all of my pipe tape. I also keep all of my pliers, welpers, different kinds of channel locks and vice grips. Um, when it comes for me, I work on a lot of air and gas lines, so having a lot of pipe uh, wrenches definitely comes in handy. Uh, I would recommend to anybody just, again, getting an assortment of these things. All of these things do come in handy. Um, at least having one of each would definitely be preferred walking on to any sort of job site. Uh, for the last drawer, I'm going to show you all. I have all of my spuds and my sleever bars so I can line up bolts and different holes. I also have all of my squares and my degree finders. I also have a set of calipers here. Uh, the one suggestion I do give for squares is I would keep buying metal. Um, there are plastic squares and such, but a lot of these plastic pieces will just get destroyed over time. And you might as well spend the money and buy a metal one that's going to last you, you know, years to come instead of buying cheap and getting plastic. The last topic for this discussion, everybody's favorite, are all of my power tools. Uh, the biggest thing with power tools for me is I would find a brand that you liked and I would stick to it, especially when you're talking about all of the battery powered power tools. Um, it gets really annoying when you have different tools and different batteries when you could just have a bunch of batteries and one or two of the same charger so you could use all the same thing. Um, for me, Milwaukee, I think, is the best industrial grade stuff. Uh, you know, it is on the more expensive side but I think it is a lot better than a lot of the other um, battery powered tools. Now, particularly I work with a lot of metal, so I do have different kinds of grinders here. Um, for me, uh, your best three grinders on the market is gonna be this Milwaukee in particular, um, this DeWalt in particular, or really any Metabo. What I like about these two grinders here compared to let's say this Milwaukee is particularly where the button is. Uh, the trigger being there feels a lot better when I don't have a guard on here and I'm sitting here using a you know six inch cutting disc to cut something. My fingers feel a lot safer having something like this. Um, you know, 
but these are really your basic tools that I would say you should keep. You know, I think everyone should have a drill, everyone should have an impact, and then at least one grinder. Again, the biggest thing is just find the company that you enjoy. Yes. That's all for the video. I hope each and every one of y'all enjoyed and got some quick, decent information on all the tools that I have in my setup. If you enjoyed the video, please like, comment, and don't forget to subscribe. That way you can be entered in to win the new Razer Gaming Mouse that I am raffling off. If you need the information on that giveaway, go ahead and check out my last video and that'll give all the information on that. Once I do get closer, I'm going to make another video to explain a little bit in more depth how everything is going to work. And also, go ahead and check out my Twitch every Tuesday and Thursday from 7.30 to 10.30 Eastern Standard Time. I will be streaming. That is tonight, so I'll see you there.